The magnificent musicality of Joan Armitrading there, who I love so very much and recognize instantly. And that's the first lie of today. I didn't know who she was there for a moment because I wasn't hearing the noise, the sound coming out. This is Cormac, Cormac Campbell. And coming, st coming shortly, Cormac, we have a story uh, from Bernardo's where uh, we're hearing about uh, the, the children of people in prison from this area visiting them. And we're top of the league of prison visits in Northern Ireland, it seems are close to the top, but children are going visiting. And I'm going to explore in a little while just what that does to children. And none better to ask than Bernardo's. Indeed. They're very, very good. Have you had a wonderful week, I ask? It hasn't been so bad, I have to say. You look like a man dressed for a state banquet. You even had your shawl on a, a couple of minutes ago. It's unfortunately gone. You put it in the cloakroom. Well, you might take it out and, and show. Are you asking me to come out of the cloakroom? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable scenes. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable scenes. But really what happened, the shawl is actually interesting because it was given to me by my, it's a, it's a Buddhist uh, silk piece shawl, and it was given to me by the Buddhists of Jampaling and Gavin. Of course it as was. As a gift. It was. I go there regularly. And the, yeah. the coincidence is that Bob Geldorf is, like me, a Buddhist, and he's keen on these things. And are, I you, wore, are you a Buddhist? Yes, of course I am. Uh, right. I'm a first Presbyterian Buddhist, okay. as you would guess. Uh, but I, I, wore it, I wore it essentially as a, a gesture of peace and of quietude and tenderness towards Bob in his present dilemma. You know, Pete just died mm -hmm. yesterday and it broke my heart. As a father, you're not a father yet, are no, you? No, I'm not. I am a father many, many times over in all kinds of places. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. He's terrible. He really is. He makes wrong assumptions all the time. No, but seriously, I, as a father, my heart just is broken by what occurred yesterday there. It was awful. And we're listening out for the, the post-mortem today. Mm. We'll hear about it, you know. What did your week hold for you? What, what morsels of magnificence did you detect in the, in the ether? Well, I think, um, first and foremost, the first thing we went for was uh, quite a striking image on the front page yeah. of local author Gary McElhern. Now, at first glance, it looks like he's just sitting on a couch, but it's actually a couch made of books. And uh, the story relates to mental health issues, and there's mm. uh, events on in the library in relation to mental health issues. So uh, there's, there's full mm. details. In, in terms I of can what never Gary's figure doing. out, and Lillian, I'm talking to you now, I can never understand why they do it. Lillian's been in here, Rosemary's been in here, the head of the library service has been in here. And what a lovely story for me to have done. And they didn't, didn't even think of telling me. Do it, do it on the Wednesday when it comes out on the front page. They wanted more people to see it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, well, uh, the Democrat doesn't come out to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, that's the library story, but we, we'll do that. We'll have Different. that chap, and he's in residence all mm -hmm. month, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. The lovely thing about the library, of course, is it's a, it's a display area for all of the talent and skills of the area, and artists predominantly, mm. and they're constantly there, you know. So that's the library story. Well, uh, the front page then, there's two main stories. One um, is in relation to uh, domiciliary carers. Isn't it funny you haven't gone to the real story yet? You've given me two stories off the front page, but the real story's on your left thumb there, See, and it's the like AWOL like 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 sailor. Like a fine wine, Rowan. As I can give it to the last. Like okay. the wedding at Cana, when we're on religious themes. Wedding at where? Wedding at Cana, the best wine at... Uh, is that a... Where is that? Is that ah, a, forget about it. <laughs> I thought a learned man like yourself <laughs> would... Uh, no, I reject religion totally. It's I thought you were a Buddhist. That's not a religion. That's okay. a lifestyle way. It's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> right. And I'm, you know, I suit myself. Cherry pick here and cherry pick there. It's all good. Right. Um, the, the story you want to hear about is in relation it's to... It's a fabulous story. And there's an airwall sailor, essentially, from a, a Latvian-owned ship that came into Warm Point Harbour. Mm. And uh, essentially, when they, they went to, to leave Warm Point Harbour, they found that one wasn't of their there. crew wasn't there and they don't know where he is. Mm. Now, the obvious concern for Warm Point Harbour is because of immigration worries yeah. and... Uh, the harbour has to ensure or wants to have a reputation that what mm. comes in also goes. Uh, so th there'll be a very keen eye and a, a lot of effort will go into mm. making sure this man is yeah, found. Right. Of course, the other awful thing is it, it may be something infinitely worse uh, than simply some someone doing a runner. Mm -hmm. He could have gone into the ocean and he could be he could have perished. You know. 
Well, I, I, at the minute, there's no indication of that. Mm. A, that he's the done scenario that. is that he disembarked. Mm. And, and is that your story? Back. Did you do it's that? It's not. Uh, Don McMahon is a, a double header from Donald on the front A double page header? Wow. The other story is uh, in relation to healthcare in the area. Yeah. Uh, Domicilary Carr has been snubbed for a second time by the Southern Trust, who have refused to meet with their elected representatives. Now, what you would expect when elected representatives request a meeting with health chiefs, they mm. get it. You would. That's why you elect people yeah. to represent you on important issues. Mm. And for that reason, that is why it's flagged on the front page. So when, when, when health workers or, or whoever mm. else ask their representatives to request a meeting and don't get it, it's, um, mm. you know... So it was the council, was it councillors? Councillors, the health committee of the council. Our representatives, our representatives on the council. Requested a meeting. And who did they the request the meeting with? With uh, Mairead McAlinden of the Southern Trust. And Mairead McAlinden of the Southern Trust, what are you doing? You're my servant, and you're the servant of my servants who are the councillors. So would you please get into gear, contact the council, talk to Tom McCall and meet these guys, because it's not the way we should be doing things. Speak to them, and speak to them now. Well, at, at the heart of the matter is one of the members of the Health Committee, Councillor Terry Hardy, he said that there's a, a growing fear factor of a privatisation takeover among carers in the district. And that's no. essentially what no. the health committee. But wants I can't to solve. believe that the, the the health people, Mairead McLinton, would not see them. That can't be well, accurate. I guess part of the thing is she would be an exceptionally busy lady. Well, I mean, not too busy <laughs> to talk to our health committee. Uh, absolutely, you absolutely. Know. But um, you know, very <laughs> busy lady. The, 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 quite likely there will be an, a meeting organised uh, in, in the so. very near future. I you hope would so. hope. You would hope so. And if they don't, give them hell, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, Ron. Uh, <laughs> uh, if we move on now to uh, the, the Giro d'Italia is obviously yeah. coming to yeah. the area next month. Yeah. Uh, a large portion of the one of the, the third stage of the race is going through South American mm. countryside. Now you would have thought that this would have provided the district with blanket uh, television coverage. Yeah. It now appears that only the final three hours of each stage will be broadcast, oh. which effectively means that when the this stage begins in Armagh travels mm. through South Armagh and into Laos. We'll be missed. We'll be missed, <laughs> by the looks of so it. So probably Terma Fekin will get them. More than likely, yeah. <laughs> or Dundalk or Drada. I, I was rather amusing that the real reason for the reduction in television was the appallingly pink jerseys they wear. They're, they're most at least, awful marketing colour. Well, you're talking about it. I'm talking about it, yeah. That's Don't uh, like it. That's effective marketing right yeah. there. Okay. Uh, just like your... Uh, ah, ah. My scarves, my, your my, scarves, my peace shawl. So my scarves. Pe sorry, your, yeah. your peace shawl. Yeah. Sorry, I stand corrected. No, that's um, all right. You're yeah. Uh, so some of the some of the uh, councillors have uh, sort of aired their disapproval, not just with mm -hmm. this uh, television coverage, but also the lack of information that's been flowing from their own council. Mm. Um, Rosie Mulgrew, uh, councillor for Slave Gullion, she said that there's been numerous meetings have taken place. And the fifth Giro meeting she's attended is the mm. first time that they've been told the, mm. the media coverage problem, mm. which is a massive issue in mm. terms of that's the, the one, the major thing people mm. thought they were getting oh, yeah. with the Giro coming through the area was but that you know, blanket you, media coverage. You, you know as well as I know that uh, the, any Giro meeting, uh, probably the broadcasters were not there at that meeting. No. And the, the, the broadcasters have their own agenda. Well, and everything's predicated on their agenda. Well, the, the tourist board would have been there, and the council would have been there. Yeah, and the tourist board don't even put Newry and Moore on maps very often. Well, you get situations the where they're yeah. left off, you know. Absolutely. So this, I don't know. Well, uh, a slightly more positive cycling story is, uh, you may be unaware that for the last couple of months, the, the middle bank area right down to Victoria Lock, there's been sort of basic works going on, mm. a clearing sort of yeah. overgrown areas. The idea essentially is that that area will be turned into a cycle. Lovely, Lane. wonderful. So you'll, essentially, you'll be able to cycle from um, Victoria Locks, but there's also the Greenway project from Omeath to, yeah. to Carlingford being developed. It's a very, yeah. So yeah. You, theoretically, you should be able to cycle from Carlingford to Portadown yeah. with only going onto the road once or twice. I think that's wonderful. So uh, yeah. that's the, they've cleared a lot of the, the overgrown uh, shrubbery, and the plan now is to bring in potential funders to yeah. show them what could be done there. You see, this I'm joyful about this because as a founding uh, member you of the Newry, the, canal. the Newry Canal Preservation Society, oh, right, right. the council wanted to close it in when they bought yeah, it and, and the turn it into yeah. car parking. And well, the original plan was... We stopped them. The Portadown Road yeah. would have been 
in the canal, mm. eventually. Yeah. But um, you weren't even born when we started this. This is 30 years ago. Yeah. What age are you now? 30. You see, I'm not far wrong. You're not. But we founded the Canal Preservation Society and stopped the council <laughs> doing stupid things with it. <laughs> and now this cheers me greatly that there is a cycle path mm. all the way down. The and lines. obviously the work is uh, near, near completion yes, around the uh, yeah. canal. So, uh, there was a lot of fuss over cherry blossom trees being removed. We have blossom again. And we have blossom again. Uh, Isn't it wonderful? The new trees that have been planted are in blossom as we speak. So go down and sniff the, the, the breeze close to the trees. Well, you can't walk alongside them yet. Because no, but you can the, put your nose through the well, chicken wire fence and get it. <laughs> Stand downwind. Um, Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, oh, uh, but God. there was proposed schemes for the upgrade. One point has been shelved. So is Newry. Shelved and shafted. Mm -hmm. There was proposals for the upgrade of the square and Church Street in Warren Point, and also uh, a second section of Hill Street mm -hmm. in Newry. Uh, both schemes, the Department of Social Development have said they've, they've no money. So what happens now is... They'll have money next year. Well, it's all Maybe. changed next year because these powers transfer oh, to, to the, other crowd. the councils. I'm glad you're like me. You're not any longer, if you ever did, refer to them, uh, referring to them as super councils. They're well, not super well, councils, there's, they're councils. No, they're super councils whilst the regular councils are still in councils. position. What's the, super the, about them? They're bigger. They're bigger. <laughs> bigger. <laughs> bigger. Like but supermarket. They're, they're, yeah. Supermarket as opposed to mini market, uh, Ron. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Super councilado. Yeah, we have it there. Right. So neither project is developing for the time being. Now, mm. when the parts transfer, to the, the council itself, it would be hoped that yeah. the money will be directed towards projects. Yeah, sounds good. One thing, the, I suppose people initially at one point had hoped that this would have been done last year. Yeah, of course. Especially with yeah. the, the area's first cruise boat yeah. coming in. Coming in uh, in July. In the summer, you would have so liked yeah. this work done. Mm, yeah. There's also the plan for the uh, park to be mm. done up mm. at one point. Is it gone as well? No, no, no it's, it's okay. It's the funding. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but at this stage, I don't think either project will be done by the time the... No, not Certainly not the, the public realm scheme. No. The park, I don't think, will be completed by the time the cruise boat comes No, in it, I don't think but so. But most of the people yeah. coming off the cruise yeah. boat are going on organised tours. Yeah. So They're um, not they're staying in the area. They're no, like the cyclists. But I think they're, they're passing through. They're expecting thousands of people, perhaps, to come into one point. Uh, to see the boat. To see the boat. Uh, another time when pe thousands of people are expected to come in to Warren Point is for the Blues and the Bay Festival. Ah, yes. At the end of May. And it's on the way. Now, we contacted uh, er earlier this year the Northern Ireland Environment Agency had said that Narrowater Keep would yeah. be open uh, at weekends in June and September and seven days a week in July and August. Yeah. Now, we contacted them to see if they would open it for the Blues and the Bay Festival no. as well. And they've said they will. Oh, they will? So, yeah. That's an unusual. Uh, 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 generosity from uh, well, I bureaucrats. Think they spent a lot of money doing up the, the, keep, the keep and I think they realised there's thousands of people coming yeah. to Warren Point for Blues in the Bay yeah. and it would be and is Ian foolish going, to miss Is Ian going to do some playing in the keep? We'll have to wait and see. Oh God, we'll that would be. See. Ian, playing <laughs> in the keep, there you are. Without a shadow of a you have a story, you have a, is your, are you responsible for the down memory lane section there? Yes. I have, there's a lovely photograph there and I tell you about it. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Bishop uh, and uh, uh, the old Bishop O'Doherty of Newry, mm -hmm. who was one of the finest bishops ever to grace these parts. And you're not a religious man, Ron. No, but I, you know what he did? At the time of the Biafran crisis, I was raising money for Oxfam mm -hmm. to go straight into Biafra. And I went to see uh, Bishop O'Doherty because people said, oh, you can't be asking for money here because the bishop will kill you. He'll damn your soul forever. He'll put a stake through your heart and you will die screaming and you will never enter the kingdom of God. So I went to see him. I said, look, I'm here. This is the reason I'm here, Bishop O'Doherty. And uh, he said, yeah, tell me about it. He got the China Cups out. We had tea and scones. And I went away with a check for Oxfam for Biafra. That was Bishop O'Doherty. He was a fisherman as well. Well, you might notice in the same photo that there's a very young um, John McAreevy. I did, yes. Yeah, so um, if you want to see what the current bishop looked like in a, in a different life. Uh, and he's there. He's um, there. John McAreevy is there. Yeah. Everyone loves a good myth. Yes. Geotourism. Yeah, I, was I can read. To, I can read you your can, mind. You can read my mind. Geotourism. Uh, yes, so without a doubt. We, We're coming shortly now. We're, we, uh, we're going. That's Bernardo's. I'm talking. To. <laughs> There's twenty-two thousand children of Bernardo's lined up out there to come in and do the next interview. How we're going to get them all into studio? I don't know. Don't Will know, you take some of them off to the reporter? If, if, <laughs> I give you that Bernardo story anyway, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you thank did. You. yeah that's good. That's good. That's um, good. I could have kept this woman to myself, as is my want. But I was generous. I handed her to you. <laughs> right. <laughs>
Um, go, go, go. Yeah, so I met with uh, Dr. Siobhan Parr. He, she's a geologist with the Geotourism Project yeah. uh, to, to confirm or dispel some of the, the various myths and yeah. legends of, of the area. Um, so one of the one of the most famous uh, myths of the area is that Slave Gullion is a volcano. Mm. And that's something she said just it's isn't not. isn't the case. Mm. Um, there was, she says it could be a UNESCO World Heritage Site though. Uh, our UNESCO site is the first ring dike ever described in scientific literature, and she said there was magma below it, but it collapsed yeah, in a circular collapsed. fashion that's rather, than, you the, yeah. rather than, than coming out. Yeah. Is Carling for Lock at Leashield Fjord? No, it only fits two thirds of the criteria. Wow, um, so is it a fjord at all? It's not, no, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's similar enough, yeah. <laughs> I guess. But leprechauns exist. In, in Carlingford. In Carlingford. That's over Easter weekend. So it's not a few words. It's no, gla yeah. no glacial activity now, there. Th this, this will interest yourself, Rowan. Thank um, you. Uh, there's gold in them there hills. Wow. Yes, indeed, there was gold in the morns. And wow. it could have been, at one time, it could have been panned in the rivers wow. in the morns. May I ask a very simple question? Why did you think this would be a very... Very interesting for me. Do you think? Well, only I'm moments a, ago you were talking about. Fellow. Only moments ago you were talking about going with the begging bowl to the bishop to try and get some cash money. That was just forty years ago. Forty years ago. Yeah. And Bishop Old Woodhard, Woodhard, Bishop, Bishop Woodhard, he said yes. I'm sure you're not here for out. free either, Owen. Where? Here. Here. Yeah. Goodness of my heart. Goodness. I of your do heart. this as a, as therapy for me in my seventieth year. I tell you. <laughs> That's true. Right. One thing you mentioned last week, Viking artifacts were originally yeah. found near Omeath. I did. The results yeah. of that investigation are sealed and have not been released yet. Not a word shall be spoken, <laughs> not a funeral note, as is corpse to the ramparts we carry. Uh, where are you taking me? I think I'll, I'll quickly run through sport and Dude, if we've oh, time we can come and back. And boxing's going to be in there too. Absolutely, Ron. Here he is, Southpaw. Absolutely. Southpaw, Southpaw. Um, one, I'll, I'll start in a different sports sport yeah. we haven't covered oh, very uh, good here idea. before, is the Kruger Lake Triathlon. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's sold out in minutes. Mm. Uh, now, if you didn't get in, we're, there's a competition in the reporter. I did, excuse me, I didn't apply. You didn't apply? For the Kruger Lake Triathlon? You swim like a salmon. I do, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. You run like Mo Farah. No, I can't. But you still have to cycle with your stabilizers. I get off the um, stabilizers. <laughs> I'm just not very good. Um, so there's a competition for some wildcard entries into this yeah. year's Crooked Lake in this week's reporter. Mm. So I understand there was quite a lot of people disappointed that they didn't didn't get in in time. Mm. Uh, so I'm sure there'll be a, a mailbag full, yeah. much like the mailbag of complaints that you would receive on well, a weekly basis. Well, you don't seem to understand that you're the enfant terrible of this part of the world, of right. journalism. Not me. Oh? I'm Mr. Nice Guy. You're evil and terrible <laughs> and bur herbal, burble, toil and trouble. There you are, stirring it up. But I'm very glad to, that you're there because it deflects attention from me. That is very good. I can say it's all him. I'm not as bad as him. I, again, another sport we haven't maybe uh, given as much attention to as we could is hockey. Yeah. And uh, New Olympic hockey clubs. I love ladies hockey. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is men's hockey. This no, time. I don't want that. Right. I don't uh, want that. I don't on the cusp of greatness as they head into this weekend's Irish Hockey Trophy final against Cork side Bandon yeah. in Dublin. It's been an unbelievable I season for, uh, for 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 Newry Hockey Club or Olympic really? Hockey Club. Yeah, they're going for their third major title this year. Good, so. third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we must so. get them in. Sean, we'll get them in next week. Yeah, the Newry Hockey Club. Yeah, that'll be great fun. Um, in, in slightly less good news, Armagh have been relegated to Division 3 of the National Football well, League. Well, I just see them planning their campaigns at various uh, uh, coffee houses around the place. And there they are, planning it all out. How would they, you know, they will come again. I mean, they're far too good to be in Division 3, and you'd yeah. expect them to They should to go back into back Division up. 1 and get Cross Midland Rangers to play all their games. No, get all these back other, to the other well, get these other clubs, pockles sorry. out of it because uh, Cross McGlen Rangers. The other what? Sorry, pockles. Pockles. Pockles or pockles. Something. It's a new word. I'm inventing it. As I, I, I don't want to offend. Presumably you designed say. to offend yeah. or diminish but I don't their want to, talent. I don't want to offend anybody. But the well, Cross McGlen Rangers for years have wiped everyone in Armagh. Yeah. But yet the county team is crap. So why why don't they get rid of the county you team? Heard it here first. Why don't they get rid of the county team and put in Cross Midland Rangers in the orange jersey? Because it's a county team, it's not a club team. I know, but you could call them the county team and they'd start winning. Okay. That's my <laughs> philosophy anyway. Well, I think one thing that's of note is that it'll cost a lot of money to the area economy because obviously Downer in Division mm. Two. Yeah. Uh, now 
next, this year's game was at the Athletic Grounds in Armagh. Mm. Next year's game would have been at Park Esler. Uh, mm. Bars, restaurants, mm. cafes, shops, mm. petrol station. Yeah, all would have done very well out of that, as well as a bumper crowd of over 10,000 people, yeah. more than likely. So and where would they go? Would they be in Uri? In the that game next year, had our man knocked or relegated, would have been in Uri. Yeah. Now but that at game least, doesn't happen. At least there is good news. Women, mothers pushing prams, will be able to go down the Warren Point Road without the GAA fans' cars all parked on the no, footpath, th down, all the way down. <laughs> down will still be playing in the Oh, no! Shoot yeah. them, get rid they of them! They haven't decided yeah. to shut Park Asler. Oh, no, but I mean, they, there must be proper parking arrangements there so that young mothers don't have to go out onto the road and vie with lorries for passage down that road. It's terrible what, what occurs there. Sean Oog, hear my words. <laughs> Yeah. Why did uh, you say all of that? Right. <laughs> You're terrible having to go down like that. <laughs> um, Alan White, <laughs> the second hard boxer, he's in the All Ireland final. Yeah, this, this is the last. This is your last bit, yeah. This is my last sport. Okay, yeah, go uh, for it. Uh, Alan White, boxing. he's in the Irish Youth One uh, final this weekend. Uh, he's fighting Kieran Malloy from Uchtarod and Galway in the 60 kilogram decider. Now it's been a tremendous run for Alan. Uh, he's won Ulster. Yeah. He's, he's into the All-Ireland final, he won a semi-final against Battery, uh, Bantry's Garoid <laughs> Lynch uh, last, last weekend. Now, Malloy is a class act, he's actually World Youth Bronze Medalist. Wow. So, if Alan wants to know just how far he can go in boxing, he's uh, got no moment. finer opponent to test himself against, genuine world-class yeah. opponent. That's at the National Stadium in Dublin mm -hmm. this weekend. Also, the Ulster uh, boy 11, 12 and 13. Championship finals are on this weekend. There's 13 local boxers okay. competing. Okay. So you will be. You will see me in a whole new oh. night. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. One go, more go, 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 go. Les Le Drama Group. Yes. Are in the All Ireland uh, Drama Festival finals. Fantastic. Uh, this weekend, Claire Morris. We wish them well. So yeah. And the new chief executive. Yeah. Of of the council, council is a big, is, big is, wig. is a big uh, yeah. uh, thespian from that part mm. of the world. Yeah. So you'll be very pleased to hear that I remember the night in which Freddie Gilroy fed, uh, fed uh, fought uh, uh, Johnny Caldwell right. for a bantamweight title in the city hall in Belfast. You remember it, or you're right? I remember it. I was there. I listened to it on the radio uh, fifty-five years ago. So you have respect for me, young man. Because you heard Cooperson. something on the no, radio. No, because I have provenance. Ago. I go back that far. You're only a Johnny come lately to boxing. I was there when when Gilroy trained at the Bosco for Pierre Rollo. You look that up in your books, ya boy ya. You see the way I put the emphasis in, ya boy ya. That does it there. Done. Done. God bless you. Go well. Take care. Ian, God bless you. You said you weren't a religious man. Or? I didn't finish. God bless you if there is a God. Okay. It's the greatest search in the world, of course, to find out, is there a God? Because if there is a God, we're all home and dry. If there's not a God, we're all Donald Ducked. <laughs> totally. Is, is sort of like, does that still kind of swearing? What, Donald Ducked? Yeah. No, no, that's poetic license. Oh? No, I wouldn't swear. I'd be afraid to drop dead, and God would say, because you have used a wrong word, I shall condemn you forever to the deepest recesses of a place called hell. Oh, man. That's us finished. <laughs> <laughs> Music! <laughs>